Hi, first graders. Today, our knowledge six lesson is lesson four, all about stargazing and constellations. Let's begin with our read aloud story. Some words that we need to know as we are preparing to have our story today is the word advances. Advances is another word for progress. I can use that as an example for this sentence. With advances in medicine, babies get shots to protect them from many terrible diseases. Listen for the word advances in our story today. The next word you're gonna hear in our story today is the word ancient. Remember the word ancient means very, very old or long, long ago. As in, in ancient times, Egyptians built the pyramids. Celestial bodies is any objects that can be found in space, including planets, stars, comets, or meteors. The sun, the moon, and other stars are examples of celestial bodies. Constellations is a group of stars in the night sky that seem to form certain shapes or outlines. An example of this is, last summer, my dad showed me how to find different constellations in the night sky. Myths are stories from ancient times that explain events or things in nature. An example of this is, in ancient times, some people told myths about a sun god who ruled over the world. Let's begin to read our story. Thousands of years ago, people had no telescopes or rocket ships. Although people back then did not have the tools and knowledge that we have today, they were just as curious about stars and other celestial bodies. The ancient Greeks, Arabs, Romans, Chinese, Egyptians, Turks, Mayans, Babylonians, and countless others who lived so long ago all studied the stars and tried to figure out what they were and why they were there. Although they did not know what the stars were made of or how far away they really were, the ancient people named the stars and mapped them out. We still use those names today. They figured out which stars appeared in the sky during certain times of the year. And even though thousands of years have passed on Earth, the stars have basically remained the same. In other words, when you look up at the stars at night, you are seeing very nearly the same stars the ancient Greeks, Arabs, and countless others saw, saw as well. Outer space has changed very little in all those years. The ancient Greeks believed that the stars had been placed in the sky by gods in order to tell stories and teach lessons. The Greeks identified certain groups of stars in the night sky that seemed to form specific shapes. These shapes are called constellations. In the United States, Europe, and many other parts of the world, we still call the stars by the names that the ancient Greeks and Arabs used so long ago. One of the first groups of stars that young stargazers in the United States learn about is also the easiest one to spot. The Big Dipper looks like a giant soup ladle up in the sky. You might also think it looks like a pot with a handle. What does it look like to you? The Big Dipper is made up of seven stars. The Big Dipper looks different in the sky depending on the time of the year. It rotates and flips, some in the sky. Sometimes the Big Dipper looks right side up and sometimes it looks upside down. Sometimes it appears to be standing on its handle. That is not because the Big Dipper moves, but because the earth is rotating on its axis and orbiting around the sun. The Big Dipper has a friend called the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper also contains seven stars. The bright star at the end of the handle is special. It is called Polaris or the North Star. Unlike other celestial bodies, the North Star basically stays in the same place in the sky as we observe it from Earth, always 
in the north. Since ancient times, people have relied on the stars, have relied on this star to find their way in the world. Knowing which way is north is the first step in figuring out which direction you are heading. Christopher Columbus and other sailors used to look for the North Star, star on starry nights out in the wide ocean. Because Polaris is always in the north sky, Columbus could use it like a compass to navigate his ships to go either north, south, east, or west. This picture shows one of the most famous constellations of all, Orion. Ancient Greeks told stories or myths about Orion, a famous hunter. The constellation Orion is known all over the world. The constellation itself contains eight main stars, Orion's belt, made up of the three stars in a row across his body, is the easiest to spot. As you can see, it takes a little imagination to look at these stars and see a hunter. The single star in the upper left is imagined to be the beginning of a raised arm, which is holding a club or sword, with the other arm imagined to extend from another single star he holds a shield. My arrow is pointing to the three stars on the right side. That's the shield. According to one myth, Orion bragged he was such a good hunter that he could kill all animals on earth. The gods decided to punish him by creating Scorpio a giant scorpion that Orion could not defeat. My arrow is pointing to what is the tail of this constellation. I've also included a picture of a scorpion for you. Not far from the Orion constellation is Taurus, which shows the head and horns of a mighty bull. It is often said that the hunter Orion is fighting the bull Taurus so according to the myths, Orion has a tough time up there. He is being chased by a giant scorpion at the same time he is fighting a giant bull. Fortunately, Orion has a couple of friends, his two loyal hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. These are Latin words meaning small dog and big dog. These dogs follow Orion through the sky, helping him fight Taurus the bull. There are 88 major constellations, and most people around the world use the same basic list. When these constellations were first named, most ancient people could only guess what stars actually were. Ancient people told stories and myths based on what they could see with their own eyes when they looked up at the sky. But we have learned that there is much more to space than meets the eye. In fact, sometimes when we look into outer space, our eyes can play tricks on us. The first astronomers began using mathematics and science to provide different kinds of explanations than the myths that ancient people told to describe what they saw in the sky. Rather than make up stories, Astronomers developed hypotheses or scientific explanations based on the facts they discovered about outer space. For example, ancient people saw that the sun rose on one side of the sky in the morning and set on the other side of the sky in the evening. Seeing the sun's movement across the sky caused ancient people to believe that the sun moved while the earth stood still. Ancient Greeks and Arabs, and in fact most people in the world, believed that everything in the universe, including the sun and all the stars, revolved around the earth. It took thousands of years before anyone believed that the opposite was true, that the earth in fact revolved around the sun. This discovery was made by an early astronomer named Nicholas Copernicus. He was the first to use science to explain that Earth actually revolves around the sun. Unfortunately, hardly anyone believed him at that time. 
That was about 500 years ago. Another astronomer named Galileo came after Nicholas, and he believed that Nicholas said about the Earth revolving around the sun. He invented telescopes. Another astronomer named Galileo came after Nicholas, and he believed what Nicholas said about the Earth revolving around the sun. He invented telescopes that helped astronomers prove that Nicholas's theory was true. Although Galileo did not invent the first telescope, he did invent very powerful telescopes that helped him and other astronomers make many important discoveries about space. For this reason, he is considered by many to be the father of modern astronomy. Since the time of these early astronomers, people have gained an incredible amount of knowledge about the stars and the universe and now use tools like telescopes to expand that knowledge each day. Nicholas and Galileo would be amazed by the advances people have made in astronomy over the past century. Compare this incredibly large modern telescope to the one Galileo is holding in the, in the picture in the corner. Astronomers today use telescopes like this one to study the stars and other distant parts of outer space that Galileo may have never imagined. Yet even as we have gained our new knowledge about outer space, our understanding of the stars is still built upon the stories and knowledge passed on by people for thousands of years. Next time you find a constellation in the sky, you will know that other stargazers have been studying and telling stories about that same group of stars for thousands and thousands of years. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed learning about stars and some more about astronomers. Enjoy the next couple YouTube videos you have for today's lessons and any other activities you might have. Have a great day. Remember, continue to learn more every day.